Today, I would like to talk about true RMS multimeters and hopefully answer the question on whether or not you need a true RMS meter for what you are measuring. If you're a homeowner who's only looking to measure voltage around their house, you do not need a true RMS meter. If you're an electrician who only does residential wiring, you do not need a true RMS meter. First of all, let's talk about what RMS stands for. RMS stands for root mean square. It is a mathematical calculation that says if I were to take this AC waveform, which you can see is 340 volts peak to peak, and rectify that into a DC equivalent voltage, this would give me the same amount of energy as 120 volts DC would. So now that we know what RMS stands for, let's talk about true RMS. I've got four different meters here from four different manufacturers. These two are true RMS meters. These two are averaging multimeters. What that means is these take an average of a clean AC waveform. And as long as you have a pretty much pure sine wave, an RMS meter is going to give you the same voltage reading as a true RMS meter. True RMS meters are not more accurate. All of these meters are accurate to 1% AC voltages. So it's not that a true RMS meter is more accurate when you've got a clean sine wave. They're only more accurate when that is not a pure sine wave. So right now, like I said, with this pure sine wave, I've got right around 120 volts on all of these guys. If I disconnect this sine wave and put in a triangle wave instead, Now, these, got, these two true RMS meters are still measuring around 120 volts, 119 volts on that triangle wave, but the RMS meters are five volts different instead of a couple tenths of a volts difference because these guys average out the energy differently than what a true RMS meter does. The, a true RMS is a lot more accurate in determining the total amount of energy in that waveform. If you read from different meter manufacturers, they love to tell you that, hey, you need a true RMS meter because you have CFL light bulbs, you have LED light bulbs, you have switching power supplies on computers. These different devices draw current differently, and you probably need true RMS if you were going to measure the current that those are drawing. But if you're looking to measure the voltage, you won't need true RMS. Here I've got my nice sine wave. Now, if I were to switch in incandescent light bulbs, I still have a nice clean sine wave. If I were to switch in CFL light bulbs, I still have a nice clean sine wave. These meters are measuring the same voltage whether I have a CFL bulb in or whether or not I have an incandescent bulb in. So when are you going to see a voltage that is not a pure sine wave? Well, you would if you were using a light dimmer. So let me unplug this AC signal that's coming straight from the line and plug in this dimmer switch. Now you can see the dimmer is full on right now and it already my sine wave is not nice and clean. You can see some noise happening here in the sine wave. And now instead of measuring the same between my true RMS and my RMS meters, now I've got about a two volt differential because of that little bit of noise. If I start to dim that light, look at what happens to the waveform, doesn't just lower that clean AC waveform, it actually starts to chop it off. And when it chops it off, now look at the difference in readings. My true RMS are both measuring 66 volts, my RMS are both measuring 41 volts. So I'm seeing a big difference between my, R, my true RMS and my RMS meters when I start dealing with something like a light dimmer. Another place that you might see uh, distorted waveforms is let's unplug this dimmer and go into this battery operated UPS. Now when he's plugged in I've got 120 volts from I've got a nice pure sine wave. If power were to go out so let me unplug this guy. Now I'm working off of battery backup. He's beeping because I'm on battery backup. You can see that my sine wave is no longer nice clean sine wave it's more of a square wave type energy, but the true RMS meters are measuring the 120 volt equivalent that this guy is putting out. The RMS meters are showing 110 volts because this is not a clean sine wave anymore.
plug him back in. He goes back to AC power and my sine wave is clean. Both meters are measuring pretty close to each other within a couple tenths of a volt. So basically, if you've got a clean sine wave, which you're going to have most of the time, a true RMS meter and an RMS meter are going to be measuring approximately the same voltage. It's only when you start distorting that sine wave that you're going to start getting different readings. If you're looking at a manufacturer who has an RMS meter and then has the same meter that's true RMS, you're looking at usually $30 to $50 more. So is it worth it to you to have that kind of accuracy um, for that price differential? It really comes down to what you're measuring and whether or not you're going to be seeing waveforms that are different than a pure sine wave. Personally, I do not believe most users need a true RMS multimeter. However, I do think that most users do need true RMS clamp meters when you're measuring current. Like I mentioned before, even though this waveform looks nice and clean from a voltage waveform when I'm powering up CFLs, the current waveform looks a lot messier. Um, and you need a true RMS clamp meter in order to measure that current. So I'm going to do another video on measuring current with clamp meters and the need for true RMS. Once I finish that video, I will put a link to that in the description of this video. There's a lot more to learn about selecting the right meter or how to use your current meter more effectively. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to learn more about meters and to see reviews.